G'day, how you going? So let's talk about the flash. Um, that's where we're up to in the manual. Now, flash photography, it's not the easiest. Now, flash photography is huge. I mean, there's so much to it. So I'm just gonna start with the onboard flash. The camera comes with an onboard flash. If you don't know how to do it, the on button, you just go one more up and it, and it opens up the flash. That's it. So I went and bought the the Godox um, thing that everyone recommends. It's the TT350. O. So you've got to get the O one for the Olympus cameras. And then the radio trigger. So you don't really need the radio trigger because you've got an onboard flash and this thing has a little sensor. So when the flash goes off, it sees it and then this flashes. Uh, the onboard's very limited. I mean, it's only really good for filling that I've seen so far. You know, when you fill in just your face and if your face is dark, and the background is exposed so like when you got silhouetted shots and that fills in that's what they call a fill in um, but then you need this um, to really master um, photography flash photography so or you can either put it on top of the flash or you can go like that and you know direct the light and from what I've been reading now it's it's really all about controlling the ambient light versus the artificial light which is the flash so and it's a it's a balancing act whether the flash blends with the ambient light or you crush the ambient light and then fill in with this light and or the the reverse so it's so it's it's actually quite a challenge to learn flash so well let's get stuck into it and um, we'll go through the menu so this is where you change the flash settings so you've got auto, the flash will go off whenever it thinks it needs it. You've got red eye, that's for your red eye, in case you get photos turn out with red eye. That's normally happens when it's low light. There's also the red eye thing, but I've every photo I've taken, it's never done red eye. I think what the camera is doing is it does a pre-flash, takes a meter reading and then does another flash. So maybe that's why I'm never getting red eye, but there is a red eye option. Let's test that out. Red eye. There. Let's have a look. So the first flash adjusted your eyes and then it took the shot again. So if you have a look then, yeah, the red eyes are, there's no red eyes there. I mean, I had a few beers last night, but you got fill in now fill in means the flash will go off no matter what okay so let's try one outside for fill in so as you can see the fill in flash brought me up so you can use the flash in daylight if the background is exposed but my face is in the dark that's like a silhouette then you can use the flash to fill in do they call it the fill in flash so it fills in the light of the subject at the front. So fill in flash. Okay. Open up the flash. So at F2.8, you can see there it's when I put the flash on, it dropped down to 100. The background's too bright. So what I had, I had the sink too low. Oh, I think I changed it before. Normally it's at 250. So if I go into the menu system, go to the custom flash, the high limit sync was at 1 100. So I can change that to the highest, which is 250. Okay, now it's still flashing at 250. So the background is way too bright. So the only thing to do there is to try, first we'll lower the ISO, put that down to low, still no good. The only other thing then to do is to raise the aperture. So let's just go 200, so 6.3, I'm going to lose a little bit of background blur. But that's all right. 
I'm a little bit dark, so what I can do also is now let's try and bring up the exposure of the the FEC, the f the flash exposure compensation. Let's go one stop to make the flash a little bit more powerful. Try, let's go all the way to the top. That's three plus three. So that still wasn't that good. So maybe I've got a bit of room to play there. I'll I'll um I'll drop it down to five point six. So let's let's drop it down to five. So yeah, that's not too bad. I mean, as you can see, with the onboard flash, you don't get much of a uh, you don't get much of a range. So you really need an offboard flash. But compared to that photo there from nothing and then we started mucking around that's the final shot let's take a normal shot yeah I mean that's completely silhouetted pop a little bit dark pump up the FEC you get let's go all the way to three yeah so that's not too bad this one here you can just turn it off now these two here um, that's just the red eye version of the same that one and that one what these two are for when you're in low light and what that will do because remember the shutter speed can um, only go so low to work with the flash so what these two do is it allows you to use a slower shutter speed and that's good for when you want to get the background which is like say like you're in a sunset and the background is dark is darker but you want to illuminate the subject like a portrait so the shutter speed will be low enough to expose the the background and then the sh the, sh the flash will be able to go off to lum illuminate the subject the portrait say if you remember when we went to scene mode here do you remember this one night and portrait it's the same as that for shooting both the main subject and illuminating backgrounds in evening or at night shutter speed is slowed so obviously you need to be on a tripod this is just the auto version you know the camera gives you so i'll do another video for these two because it's um it's a little bit tricky so the basics gist of it is the difference between these two is that this one the flash goes off at the start of the exposure and this one the flash goes off at the end of the exposure so they call it the first curtain and second curtain so the flash goes off when the first curtain opens uh, freezes the front subject because the flash goes off and then because you're at a low shutter speed then the rest of the time say it's what one second um, the ambient light builds up and then this one it's say it's a one second exposure the ambient light builds up in that one second and then right at the end of that second the flash goes off and freezes the front subject and then this last one here is manual mode then what you can do with that is underneath here you can change the strength of the of the flash so if you go they all it's all measured in stops so that's that full strength of the flash and then it gets weaker and weaker by by stops and thirds of stops or whatever so then if you look that's the weak that's the weakest 164 so i've put it into manual mode and i've put the flash into manual mode jerry what, what are you looking at Yes, let's take some photos. And then in the flash, underneath here, you can change the the strength of the flash, the power of the flash. So that's full power, and then that's 164. So you can see with 164, um, it's a little bit underexposed. So then let's take one at full, and then that one is way too exposed. So let's play around with that. 1 over 25 strength so you can play around so that that was and then you can play around with the manual settings yes that's how the flash works jerry 
You understand? Okay, so in the menu system, it's in the F number there, and then it's called custom, and then in here, you can choose the sync speed. Choose the fastest shutter speed available when the flash is fired. You can change that here, so what that means, for instance, if I set that to 125, when you turn on the flash, the, the shutter speed won't go above that. So, and similar, the slow limit there, you can set that as well. And then this one here, the exposure compensation will be added to the flash. So if I turn that on, all right, use the front dial and change the exposure compensation for the ambient light, the flash exposure compensation also moves along with it. Yeah, anyway, so that's just a small introduction to the flash um, and what it, what the onboard one can do. But really, you know, you need one of these um, and I'll do that next and I'll start mucking around with this one. So it's not the easiest thing to learn flash because it's all about the you know dynamic range and mixing the ambient light with the flash light and the smaller the size of the light compared to the subject so because I'm big and that's only a small little light so it's going to be a harsh light like a direct um, that's why you get that direct flash look. Um, you need to diffuse it or you need to make it bigger with umbrellas and stuff. I've ordered some umbrellas so they're going to come and we'll muck around with this. And there are some tricks you can use. I mean, remember these. You can use like you can use these old canisters or cut out a little thing there and put it on top. I saw some bloke on YouTube do that. So, but at the end of the day, it's a pain in the ass. Just buy one of these. Okay, so that's it. Thanks for watching. Um, next one, I'll get stuck into the real flash and see how it goes.